Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations, you know that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's on Martha's Vineyard, that means right here. And so we try to bring guests who can, who can help you figure out how you can do that, like for the rest of your life. Now, usually my friend, Sandy Cordobi, who is my co-host, and we've been doing this for a long time now, several years, you know, time marches on. Um, finds We're getting these older. Yeah, we are getting older. And, so and you are. And, and, <laughs> oh, you're killing me here today. You're killing um, she finds these great guests because the because she knows everybody on Martha's Vineyard, and of course I don't. But this time I actually brought a guest of my own um, who is actually from the other island. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sue Story uh, is a financial advisor on Nantucket. Uh, but through the magic of Zoom now, one of the things I've come to appreciate is you can get folks, you know, that you normally would never really get to see um, because they're they're just everybody's on Zoom, right? So I asked um, Sue to come on and talk to us a little bit, talk to you about a little bit about um, financial issues and financial management, money management issues that really relate to seniors. And I thought this was appropriate because inevitably at this time of year, people are talking about taxes and they're worried about their finances and they're just kind of stressed out, you know? So, so thank you, um, Sandy, for letting me invite Sue. And thank you, Sue, for taking some time off, right? I know it's always busy over there, but but I bet that the weather, even as it is, it, you know, I bet on both islands today, it's a good day to be on the island. Yeah, just like, you know, whenever the sun is out in February, you know, it's a bonus, so. It's like, it's like really good. <laughs> so, so Sue, um, you know, we were talking about, you know, a little bit, a little bit about this ahead of time. And, and I think, you know, the, 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 what's of interest to folks, to Frank and Mary, to everybody who's like Frank and Mary, uh, is just kind of figuring it out. People, you know, get, you get to our age, my age, you guys are all younger, right? And, you know, you're, you're, you're working part-time or not necessarily working increasingly, you know, you're, you're seeing friends or you've got older, older friends or relatives. I had a sister who died a month ago, one of my older sister who was 86, you know, she was, she was the oldest, I'm the youngest. But, you know, you're thinking about those kinds of issues and you're just trying to figure stuff out, you know, and you worry about money. You really worry about money. So I was, I was wondering if you could just talk about how people can think, can be thinking about that and maybe what they can be thinking about and what the issues are from your perspective that you kind of, you know, hear the most about and, and how they should be figuring this stuff out. And then, you know, as you, as you know, because you had appeared on our show, on my show on Nantucket, um, then we'll just kind of talk, you know, Sandy raised a question beforehand that we may want to raise a little bit about, right? So I'm Frank and Mary, what, what do I, what, what am I needing to be thinking about? Um, first of all, thanks Arthur and thanks Sandy for having me today. Um, the last third of life is pretty much the area I specialize in. And some key things to think about are you really want to have a good planning team. You want to have a financial advisor. You need to have a CPA and also an attorney. And those three people working together can really set up the foundation for you moving um, forward. Uh, some of the things you think about are, what am I gonna live on the rest of my life? What do I do for income? So, you know, that can be where the financial planner comes in or financial advisor. How do you structure your assets, right? You never wanna run out of money. Um, you wanna protect yourself. You're the priority. The very best thing you can do for your children is take care of yourself. That's the very best thing you can do. And it's the very best thing you can do for yourself as well. Um, and for your children, take care of yourself. The, so, you know, that's where an attorney can come in and make sure your, you know, estate plan is in order, your wishes, any power of attorney if something happens to you. Um, 
you really want to think about how your assets are structured. Do you own them in your name? Do you own them jointly? Can they be put in a simple transfer on death account so it goes to beneficiaries, you know, rather than having to set up a trust if you don't have significant assets or issues. Um, and then the, you know, the accountant can help you with your tax efficiency, along with working with a financial advisor. Uh, you know, you want to, um, you know, generally speaking, you know, you don't want to draw, drawing down, if you never take out more than 4% of your assets, you should never run out of money. That is a general theme in, um, the financial planning world, the investment management world. So you want to make sure you're working with a good advisor who can help you set up your investments, give you an income stream that you can depend on. Um, and so you can sleep at night, you know, without a lot of risk. That person can also sort of act as a quarterback with the, uh, the CPA working towards tax efficiency. Are you going to be selling a house? You know, we're selling a vacation home. What about capital gains on something like that? How does that work, right? That's a big, um, assets on the vineyard have grown exponentially the last few years, the value of real estate and the such. Um, and I always tell folks on the vineyard, if you wanna know where things are going, just go look at Nantucket. Oh. You've got you've got the same kind of you know you got the same kind of underlying factors you know it's an island you can't get there by bridge you know it's really beautiful right and 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 the and I've watched and I've been what doing working on the two islands now for quite a while and you just see there's just very there are so many similarities you can just see everything kind of going that way you know and and it, you know it's funny you mentioned the capital gains issue as you know before. Before we started, Sandy, you and I were talking about issues and you had mentioned to Sue, you know, this is something that comes up all the time. People asking me about how does this capital gain stuff work? I mean, you know, if, if it's a vacation home, if it's a primary residence, but this goes to really something, Sue, that you said right at the, off the, at the top, which was you need this team, right? Because so Sandy Cordobi is this just great geriatric care manager. I've worked with her for years and she's dealt with a jillion seniors and senior issues and we talk regularly. But, but you don't know who to ask when you're Frank and Mary. So you ask the person you trust and everybody trusts Sandy Cordobi. So they ask Sandy and Sandy's like, well, I don't know from capital gains. You know, that's kind of not my issue, you know? And, and so often folks will ask me either will ask me for financial advice. And I'll be like, you know, I, you know, figuring out how your, what your investment return is and all that jazz, right? I mean, I do, I do, I know quite a bit about the tax stuff, but not as much as, as, you know, a great CPA would or a great tax lawyer, right? So having that kind of balance is a real, and, and, and so, and so often I'll have somebody that'll talk to me and say, my, you know, my financial planner said this, and then what do you think? And then I'll tell them, and then they'll come back and they'll say, well, you know, my financial plan, I disagree with you. And I'd be like, well, you know, why don't we all get on a call together here? You know, why don't we just, but so, so, so going back to what you were, we were talking about, I kind of, if I'm Frank or Frank and Mary, and if I haven't figured this out, you know, and I'm kind of like here by mistake, right? You know, I, I retired and oh my God, you know, I'm not retired, you know, and there's some money. And maybe I've got an annuity that somebody sold me at some point, or I've got some CDs or money's in the bank. And so, how, but how do I figure it out? How do I, how do I go about figuring out, you, you know, going to the financial piece that you were talking about? Mm -hmm. How do I, how do I start, you know, by figuring out what I might need uh, so that I can even ask the, these, these, these advisors the right questions? Uh, that's a good question, Arthur. So, you know, if you're just heading into retirement, there's the timing of when you should take Social Security. You, and it depends if you're single or you're married. Do you take yours? Do you take your spouses? Things like that. So one important thing is to get, all, get your Social Security estimates. You can get that directly from Social Security at www.ssa.com. Not Steamship Authority, but Social Security Administration. 
So www.ssa.com is where you can, it's your own private account, you have your user ID and password, but you'll be able to get your um, social security estimates if you take them at, at various ages and um, you know what any survivor benefits might be. That's a piece of information you would wanna get together. Um, you wanna to have together any um, bank account balances, um, investment accounts, uh, retirement or pension plans if you're fortunate enough to have one. Um, a lot of teachers and town employees um, have Barnstable County, for instance. Uh, and not a lot of private corporations have pension plans anymore, but you wanna get uh, pretty much all the supporting information together. It's really important to have a copy of those statements because it will show how they're titled. Titling is very important, whether it's in one name or joint names, if it's you know in one spouse's name or the other. That, that's some basic groundwork. In real estate, any other assets or investment assets, vacation homes, if you own part of a property with a sibling somewhere, you know, really get together all the different pieces of your financial um, world. Then, you know, in terms of what you need to live on, I've never, I started in 87. So in 30 plus years, I've never met a person who really wants to live on less when they retire than when they're working. Um, it's possible and you can, but you know, that's not really the goal. So you want to think about, um, you know, you can live on less because you're not saving for retirement and so on. But you want to think about what are your basic, you know, you have all your financial assets listed within a pile. Next, what are your expenses? What are your fixed expenses? What does it cost for you to live in your house, your utilities, um, maintenance, insurance, all of those things. Uh, travel back and forth to the mainland, right? Um, we call it America here. You probably do there too. <laughs> so, um, what are? I don't want to tell you what they call what they call uh, the Nantucket there, right? But that, yeah, that's all right. I won't tell that, you about that. that that's a whole other question. But, you know, I'm kind of kumbaya about those things. Uh, both islands have wonderful. Um, Wonderful strengths, wonderful features. Uh, so, you don't have to. You don't have to cover for yourself now. You know, I'm, you're, we're accepting the fact that you're from that you're in Nantucket. That's just the way it goes, right? Uh, so, in terms of putting together, you know, income, like, oh my gosh, how do I know what I need to live on? Well, you have those fixed expenses, you know, associated with your home or your residence if you're renting. Um, you have your health insurance if you have life insurance. Just make a list of. You can go back through your checkbook or your bill pay. What have you paid every month? How much do you spend on utilities, Comcast, Netflix? You know, it's pretty easy to get a good review of those. So you come up with a number. Okay, this is my basic income, but I want to be able to do some things too. How do you plan on that? Well, you, an advisor can help you with that, but you start out with your, your core expenses, then add a little bit into it you know, for groceries, things like that. And one interesting thing that some people do, um, take for instance, travel. Well, I wanna travel, but how much do I know I wanna spend on travel? Well, you know what? I know I wanna see my grandkids at least every spring and fall. They're in California. I wanna make at least two trips out there. So you know what? Hmm, I'm gonna need $5,000 every April. I'm gonna go out for Easter and then I want another $5,000 to go out in November. So you can come up and, you know, I'm just using that as examples. Um, and it can be any dollar amount, but, you know, so one idea, one strategy we use is, okay, great. We're going to provide for the monthly income between social security and various investments, retirement plans. But then, oh, you know what? We know we want to take these, um, these trips or have, you know, these, I call them seasonal expenses. Um, so a client, she takes out $10,000 every June because their family comes in the, you know, on top of monthly income, they come for the summer and she just wants to be able to relax and play and have fun. So you can set up 
a monthly income stream for yourself and then have uh, quarterly or semi-annual disbursements to supplement it. Um, think about how you want to live, what you want your life to be like. Are you going to, you know, go to Florida for the winter? Well, gee, you know, you still have your house maintenance costs, but you know, you're gonna rent for six months down there. So, or three months or four months, whatever that amount is. All right, well, I need to have that every November, $10,000 for where I'm gonna rent in Florida. That seems to be a more realistic and practical way than just breaking everything down into a straight monthly income. Um, and so, and then so, tell me what, once you've figured that out, or if you've started, you're starting to think about that, and you want to talk to somebody about it, yeah. can you just talk to talk, just talk for a few minutes about financial planners versus money managers versus like where do you find where do you find the advice? Where do you find the advice? And what, are the plus, and what are the pluses and minuses, you know? I'm not find good advice. So generally, you know, most... Well, you know, there's always the, 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 the well, the, it's the Dunkin' Donuts advice, which is there's no Dunkin' Donuts on Nantucket. So <laughs> that's always a great well, here? that's a great well of advice in a lot of places, right? There's no, there's no Dunkin' Donuts on Martha's Vineyard either, right? So you you know, starting out, you may want to deal with I don't know, someone who's more of a generalist, a financial advisor, a financial planner. A money manager is going to be about managing the investments, primarily just, you know, using those terms. And I really think the most important part is having a great strategy coming up with your strategy is really the core of how you're going to proceed going forward. Um, there are, um, you can find a CFP, a certified financial planner. You can find it and you can look online for those. You can find an AIF, an accredited investment fiduciary. They're obligated to, you know, do things in your best interest. Um, those are, you know, primarily the places you would start. Um, you know, you so can ask you your friends. This. Let me redirect for a second. So one of the, one of the most full, um, sort of um, common phone calls that I get is from a client on either island that says, Sandy, I am 85 years old. I'm perfectly healthy and happy and doing well. I retired 20 years ago. I had no idea I'd live this long. And now I'm worried that I'm going to run out of money. I don't need anything right now, but what do I do going forward? So at a point where we're beyond the good planning and right. the strategy before we retired, and now we're 85 and we are healthy and doing great, but getting worried about the dwindling bank account, where, where would they start with a com? Who should they start with a conversation? Besides Sandy, because again, I'm a better nurse than I am financial. <laughs> um, well, again, an advisor should, you know, not even be able to work with a long term plan. Uh, if someone were to call in that situation, Sandy, um, you know, you kind of just look at their, their resources and say, all right, well, um, you know, if you're facing a long-term care situation, as Arthur knows, and you run out of money, that's great because it's going to be taken care of for you. That's not an issue. But if you're living alone and healthy, you know, if you own a home, um, if there's a couple really, you know, sometimes you have to make really difficult decisions. Do you sell your house and rent, move someplace else? you know, things like that. And that could give you a pool of money. If you own a home, um, a great resource, definitely not the first channel to go through, but as a, you know, very, very emergency backup is you can do a reverse mortgage where um, banks pay you every month 
and if your death, the house is sold, the bank is paid back, and your heirs keep the difference. You know, that's kind of a last, um, one of the last things you do. Well, we talk about that with our clients a lot, and sometimes it's a great it, it's a great alternative for folks that have uh, their biggest asset is a piece of property, and they need to just get some of the some of the working capital out of that. And, yeah. um, and it's all HUD protected nowadays. So there's oh, for a while, their reverse mortgage got a really bad rap, but um, but it's it's changed over the years. And for some people, like you said, not all, and it shouldn't be the first thing you think of. of especially if you're under 80 or so years old, but, um, but it does work for some people to keep them home. And the other thing that I think is important and maybe not for Frank and Mary, um, but maybe for Frank and Mary's kids that are watching is you really have to consider long-term care insurance, right? That is a, an avenue to use to have money available to you for care as you're getting older. And, and people tend to shy away from it because it can be reasonably expensive and it certainly can, but um, but what a godsend it is when it's there um, for people that need care at home. Those are both, that's very true, Sandy. Um, and you know, your point on the reverse mortgage, it's a tool. It's simply a tool in the toolbox. And at any point in your planning in your life, you just kind of look at your toolbox and go, okay, what tools are there available to help me, you know, accomplish or live? what I want to accomplish or, you know, live the best I can for the rest of my life. Um, Long-term care insurance, I'll just make a little comment on that, isn't, there are things you can do that have long-term care benefits that are not traditional long-term care policies with the hugely expensive monthly premiums. And, you know, if you're, um, the older you get, you know, long-term care insurance goes up exponentially. You know, no one wants to be paying 10,000 a month you know, when you're in your 80s for long-term care. But there are some um, products, I call them tools, but you know, essentially they're products where an individual can put in a lump sum of cash and it will provide various things. It will provide a certain amount of long-term care benefits, um, It'll provide you, you can always get your cash back out if you want and cancel everything and it can also provide you a death benefit. So those are called hybrid policies. And it's another way of getting long-term care um, coverage. So. And I, and I guess that the, <clears throat> my kind of general comment on those is that it, once again, if you're Frank and Mary, you wouldn't even know what the tools are. You know, you wouldn't. You you would have heard about them maybe vaguely from from somebody, but to, but to be able to actually spend some time talking about what those might be, figuring out the pluses and minuses, talking to and having a person who is figuring out those numbers in the mix together with your lawyer and maybe with and maybe with your with an accountant, right, are just essential. And I guess that's why I really appreciated, you know, a lot of these comments. I just want to mention one other thing. I know that we were, uh, Sue, we were talking earlier about this issue of making sure that, you, you know, your estate plan may, provides for who gets what when you die. Can you just spend a few minutes about that? Because I know we talk about that and you said, you, oh. you know, you talk about this a lot with folks, right? Yeah. Because you want to make sure your life is right, but then in the back of your mind, you've also you're also saying to yourself, "Well, if I just drop dead tomorrow, here's where I want things to go," you know. But you want yeah. to make sure that gets done right, right? So there are basically two schools of thought and two ways to approach that, Arthur. It can be, you know, what I worked hard for this money, saved everything. I'm just going to spend it, and whatever happens to it when I die, when my time is up, I don't care. I don't care, I'm done, I won't be here, and that's that. It gets a little more complicated when you have family, when you have kids, and then when you have grandkids, you really want to do everything for, the, um, for those grandkids, set up college funds and, you know, all sorts of things. Um, but account titling is very, very, very important 
and also communication between the attorney and the financial advisor or the money manager. We've dealt several times with people who had various trusts set up, but the trusts were never funded. You know, there was never any communication between the attorney and the financial advisor. You're not supposed to be an expert on this. That's why you're, you're seeing these other professionals. Um, and sometimes the trust, you know, I've had two this year that were never funded because um, for various reasons. And so, and you also, you know, if it matters, you want to think about the people you're leaving money to and their ability to manage it or handle it. Um, that can be a pretty significant um, issue, you know, issue if that you know, matters to you. If you want to just leave it to your kids and they can do whatever they can. But and especially because, an issue for a lot of folks who've got this, this real estate that you didn't think it was worth a lot, but all of a sudden, you know, you die and there are going to be these big checks going around, you know, when the house gets sold, you know, and, and, and can these people really handle the money, you know? Well, the other issue you brought up with real estate is lots of times, you know, if you have three or four children, two want to keep it and two don't. Two can afford to keep it, three can afford to keep it, one can't. How do you provide for liquidity for, you know, the three that want to keep it to buy out the other one? So there's a lot of intricate planning that needs to go on with real estate. Um, and it's just so unfortunate, but when, when people do die, it, it can, if these issues haven't been thought about and planned for, you know, with contingencies such as financing, um, purchases between siblings, it, it can be a real mess. And, it can really divide families. So, so I'd like to I'd like to close with that, right? So it can be a real mess, right? So <laughs> so folks, trust me, I've seen that. That's what I do, right? That's one of the things that I've had to deal with is the real messes. And I'm okay with being paid a lot of money to try to resolve these real messes, but boy, you're not doing your kids any favors by putting them in those situations. So Sue, I really want to appreciate you taking the time here, right? Sandy, thank you very much for this. And then, I, and I know that we, you know, we even talked about following up also with the person, you know, from the from the vineyard to kind of talk about some of these other options. I think it's really important. I think the bottom line, though, is a a financial person is a key piece of this team, right? A key piece of this team. Don't ask Sandy or me or the guy at the at the at at Mocha Mots, you know. How this is, you know, not nothing against Mocha Mots, you know, but how your finances are supposed to work. Maybe, maybe get them all together, even invite the guy from Mocha Mots. But the point is, have a conversation about this. This is really, really important. You'll sleep better at night. As early so, as possible. As early as possible. And then check it as things change. Your life changes. Keep, as Sandy pointed out, you know, your life at 85 isn't what maybe what you thought it was when you were going to when you were 30 or, or when you were 70, right? So thank you very much, Sue. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks, Thanks Ashley. You. Thanks, Sandy. Thank Thanks, you. We Sue. hope you thank you. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you in the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much. Thank you.